Hey, it would be cool if you joined my Patreon, but like, no pressure or anything. Hey there, are you into mathematics, theocratic monarchies, and anthropomorphic animal characters? Well, somehow there was an entire civilization of people just like you for 3,000 years, so why don't we see what that was all about? I'm Jake, and this is Egyptian Mythology. At first there was just a lot of water with some frogs and snakes swimming around and not much else going on. But then a guy named Atum decided he wanted to exist, so he hatched out of an egg and made some ground to chill out on. He started to feel a little lonely on his primordial earth mound, so he sneezed out two kids named Shu and Tefna, and they all just hung out together for a while. But disaster struck one day when Shu and Tefna slipped and fell into the water, so Atum sent out his eye to jump in and rescue them. And when they all returned safely, he was so relieved that he cried out a whole population of humans. A little while after that, Shu and Tefna married and had two kids named Geb and Nut, who fell madly in love and had four kids of their own named Osiris, Set, Isis, and Nephthys. And that's when Shu realized that multi-generational inbreeding was a bad idea, so he took it upon himself to cockblock his kids. <coughs> <clears throat> anyway, remember Atum? Well, now he's a bird-headed guy named Ra. I'm not gonna elaborate on why this happened because syncretism is complicated, and I'm not gonna draw his, like, dozen other forms, okay? He's just gonna be a birdman. Let's move past this. Carrying on, Ra noticed that the humans needed a little help figuring out how to function, so he decided to become the ruler of the world, and he did a pretty bang-up job establishing civilization and all that. But eventually, some humans started misbehaving, which really ticked him off, so he sent out the warrior goddess Sekhmet to straighten out those delinquents. And she accomplished her objective with lightning efficiency, but then started to go a little overboard, and Ra realized his direct intervention was necessary. So he put some red food dye in a few bottles of beer and placed them within Sekhmet's line of sight. Ooh, is that the blood of my enemies? Don't mind if I do. That's some damn good blood. Oh, alright, well, I think I've done about all I can do here, so I may as well retire while I'm on top. Later, humans, you're welcome. And so Ra hung up his crown and took up sailing as a relaxing retirement hobby, along with battling giant chaos serpents in the underworld. So then Osiris got to be in charge, and his first order of business was teaching people to eat plants instead of each other. And thanks to this contribution, everyone thought he was a super awesome king, except for his jealous brother Set, who wanted to be in charge instead. So Set invited all the gods to a big party, where he had laid a nefarious trap for Osiris. Hey bro, glad you could make it. You're just in time to have a go at the fit inside this precarious metal box contest. Nobody's had any luck so far. Probably because they're not cool enough. Oh, neat. That sounds fun. Let me take a crack at it. <coughs> Whoa, look at that. It's a perfect fit. Oh, this was a nefarious trap. And then set through his helpless brother into the Nile to let him drown. And everyone was like, oh, okay, I guess Set gets to be in charge now. Cool, whatever. Except for Isis, who was super bummed about her brother drowning to death. So she traveled in search of the metal box he was trapped in and found it inside a tree. Long story, don't ask. Most of it was copied from Greek mythology anyway. Thanks, Plutarch. Unfortunately, Isis didn't get to mourn for too long because Set came and chopped Osiris' body into several pieces and scattered them all over the place because he's a fucking douchebag. And then Isis had to go and find all of them and put Osiris back together, and she was finally able to revive him. Wow, that really sucked. Thanks for putting me back together and resurrecting me. You're welcome, but unfortunately I don't think it's gonna last for very long. You're smelling a tad gangrenous. Aw man, well I guess we should make the most out of our limited time together. So after a passionate 2 minutes and 17 seconds, Osiris went back to being dead. Then he had to go into the underworld to join the afterlife TSA with Anubis and Thoth. And now that his brother was permanently out of the picture, Set got to continue being king despite his exceptional douchebaggery. But little did he know, Isis was knocked up and she hid behind some papyrus plants to give birth to a kid named Horus. Horus was a feeble young lad and he needed a lot of help from Isis and her friends so as not to die from a barrage of illnesses and attacks from venomous desert predators. But in time, he grew into a strong young man and then finally appeared before before all of the gods to challenge Set's claim to the throne. Hold on now, this is a load of malarkey. I won my kingship fair and square through deceit and treachery. Oh yeah? Well, I'm the son of the old king and his sister, so I'm like double royalty. Nobody can top that. Hmm, what if we allowed our citizens to elect their head of state based on a ranked choice voting system? Shut, Shut up, that's, that's stupid. stupid. So it was decided that Horus and Set would compete for the throne in a series of obscure challenges and prank wars, which led to countless wacky hijinks over the next 80-ish years that I bet a mediocre animator could make tons of entertainment YouTube videos about. <clears throat> oh, by the way, have you subscribed and clicked the bell icon yet? Just wondering. In the end, it was Horus who emerged victorious and officially got to be in charge of everything. Set was pretty bummed, but he managed to land a decent job helping Ra fight that giant snake. Anyway, after 
300 years of ruling, Horus said, eh, this whole king thing didn't really live up to the hype. I'm kind of over it now, to be honest. And gave his position to Thoth, who said, hey, this is awesome. Forget all that dumb shit I said about democracy earlier. And ruled for 7,726 years. Eventually, the gods decided to let the humans have a go at being in charge of things. But, you know, only the super special holy humans, obviously. And, uh, they did a pretty okay job, I think. They made a big statue of some guys for Sona, which was pretty cool, I guess. And, uh, from what I can remember, that was pretty much their most notable contribution to the world. Not much else to write home about. 